Hello and welcome to the Young Entrepreneur Syndicate podcast. Jim Riley here with Rod Kuntz. Hello, Rod. How you doing, Jim? Not too bad. Man, we've had some fiery topics here. I've enjoyed the discussions we've had. I've enjoyed our coaching group on Mondays. Gre Greg Dawson was awesome, in my, oh my opinion. <laughs> For just having an interview with somebody, I've got a page worth of notes. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's just, it's amazing what you can take away just talking to somebody else in a completely different field. It, you know, there are always takeaways that you can apply to your own life. It's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and if you're not familiar with what we're talking about is the Young Entrepreneur Syndicate, we do a coaching call every Monday night, 6 p.m. Montana time. And uh, this week we decided to have a special guest on Greg Dawson he is a professional bodybuilder on top of having a career, actually two careers because he's a trainer and then he works at a logistics company. Uh, and I, I suppose he's got more than that. He's sponsored by a number of apparel companies like flag nor fail. And what was so cool about it, right? You know, people have excuses all day long. Of, There's not enough hours in the day. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And you listen to Greg talk about his passion, not only for his job, but for his bodybuilding career and his family and four cats. Um, and he gets it right. all done. He gets it all done. And in his books, excuses do not exist and should not excuse. There, there's no excuses in his life. I love it. Yes, exactly. Discipline, 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 right? Yeah. If you saw and my focus. post, if you saw my post yesterday, my whole family was in the gym working out. <laughs> I love it. And the day after listening to Greg talk, you know, about discipline, we we do hit the gym, but it was funny. The kids were in there too. And I took a picture. I'm like, wow, a crowded day at the gym. <laughs> I love it. So um, what I want to talk about today or the topic for the day is passion in your business, passion in your business. And what's, you know, I love that I'm currently consulting a number of companies and have over the last five years, because it gives me so much perspective on what works, what doesn't work, what's hanging by a thread, what should have never happened and what's going really, really well. You know, by the way, I saw your daughter yesterday. She's got a successful concealed carry purse company, as you know, but I'm just telling the audience, yeah. Rod, her new products. Awesome. Have you seen it? I've seen the new one. Yes. Yes. Oh. But she's working on something else. Oh, great. Well, I yeah. saw her new she's, product she's yesterday. She's got something else too. <laughs> and I'm like, how's, how's things going? Because we were pulling inventory out of the store and, and she shows me her new product. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. She goes, yeah, it does this, this. And you know, like she's walk, walking through. I said, well, how many do you have? She's like, well, our first order, I think it was like 20 or 40. I said, save one for me. I want to buy one for my wife for Valentine's. She didn't listen to the show. I don't think so. If she does, she'll know what she's getting. But, um, <laughs> I, I told Taylor, I said, I want to buy one of those for my wife instantly. I knew I had to have that for my wife. So, uh, if you're listening, church and state is her company. Church and state designs. Yep. Yes. Church and state designs. Follow her on Instagram. She has some awesome product, but here's the point. She's so passionate about what she's doing. There's nothing that's going to stand in her way, you know? And, the the reason why I brought up this topic is actually the exact reason of what why your daughter's in business. She's passionate about her business. She knows what she wants to do. She knows where we're going. Where my concern lies is people that are in business or got into a business or bought a business or thought they wanted to be in business for themselves and they either immediately lost the passion for it, they never had it, or they lost it over a period of time. And... I'm of the opinion is if you've gotten past that passion for the business and it lo no longer exists for whatever reason, that it's really time to consider your options of getting out of that business. Because what happens with the lack of passion for what you're doing is it trickles down immediately to your staff, to your partners, to your customers, to your vendors, to the people in the outside world, to your friends, to your family, because it be it starts turning into complaints, short-sightedness, cutting corners, cheaping out on what you're doing, lesser inventory, less marketing, less excitement. All these things are symptomatic of having less passionate for what you're doing and that business will ultimately fail. So what I would like people to consider doing is evaluate their passion for their business right now 
and take steps to improve or take steps to get out. So Rod, weigh on that because I got a couple of stories I want to talk about that will uh, further the point, but I'd like to have your initial reaction. Well, I think number one, passion is passion is why we get started in a business typically, right? <clears throat> and it's easy to lose that passion when you have, uh, I don't want to say failures, but when there's always obstacles and, and it, sometimes it throws a little water on the fire, right? Mm -hmm. And that's understandable. It's getting beyond that. And how you get beyond that is going back to your why. And we talk about this. You have to ha have a firm grasp on your why. Why are you in business to begin with? What is the problem you're trying to solve? And if, if you're just in business to be your own boss, to earn a paycheck so you're not working for somebody else, that's only going to get you so far. And then you're going to, all the things that you said, you're going to end up with a caustic business with caustic relationships, and it's going to fail. And even if it doesn't fail financially, it's going to fail you in your relationship building. It's going to fail you in, in your productivity. It's going to fail you in your purpose. So I think getting back in touch with your why, and we all need those boosts sometimes. And that's why you need a network of people to talk to. You know, when you're feeling down, give yourself a little bit of grace. If you've had a bad week, a bad day, whatever it is, tap into your resources and say, Hey, I need, I need pumped up again. Remind me why we're doing this. And, and you should have somebody close to you, especially in that business that can keep you focused and, and get back into it. So if you don't have that, develop that number one, but go back to the why, why are yeah. you there? Why are you doing it? Yeah. Good, good point. All right. I got two stories and uh, these are going to point out the importance of the, if the passion's gone, move on. And Rod, maybe what you can think about as I'm giving these stories is if the passion's gone, but you want to keep doing what you're doing, how you find the passion again. Okay. Right. So here, here's my two stories briefly. Uh, as many of you know, from my background, I started tequila company back in uh, late 2006, 2007. We raised uh, $12 million and launched this brand on a national level. And the 12 million was over a period of 10 years. So uh, great business, great distribution. Uh, philosophically, it was all about partnering with Mexico and our partners at the distillery. We even donated back to uh, the school system down there to provide them with computers and resources. All, all around, it was it was incredible. I loved what we were doing. As our investors par started playing a larger role in the company, it was like a, a ball of sourdough bread. <laughs> My wife's been making a lot of sourdough. You know, you kind of pull and tug at that sourdough bread and you flip it over and around, you know, and then eventually you let it rise and, and you do that all again, you know, and, and hopefully what comes out of the oven is something spectacular. Well, throughout those years of the investors tugging and pulling, what was coming out of the oven, <laughs> pardon the metaphor, but what was coming out of the I oven like it. wasn't exactly, you know, who I was and what I stood for. And I hadn't seen it, you know, and look, when you bring on partners, you're going to have tugs and pulls and there's nothing wrong with that. That's typical. Everybody, you know, wants to give their input and go their direction, especially based on the, the value that they're bringing to the table. Even if you are the founder and the originator and built the mission plan and all that other stuff, you still, as you bring on partners, it's, there's going to be a tug of war. Okay. So I don't want to discount or I don't want to speak ill of the partnerships, but what I do want to talk about is as th that product was coming out in the end, I realized because my wife pointed it out, and this is to your point, Rod, sometimes you got to listen to people around you. She pointed out, she says, Jim, this company isn't the same as what you started. You know, the, the things that the company stands for are the direction it's going. What's coming out of the oven is not the same things that you started this company for, right? And she made me realize that I had lost my passion for why we started it and what was important. And I, allow, and I allowed my partners to put their initiatives forward. And that's what was, you know, depleting my passion for the company. And she said, I would support you even if we had to live in a shack to step away from this because your, your heart's no longer in it and it shows in your health, you, you know, your physical, your mental, your daily, your motivation to get up and go to work, what you're doing, it shows it's time to move on. And I, I'm like, whoa, I didn't realize that. 
Although I might have intuitively, I just didn't put my finger on it. It took her to do it. So sometimes you could be wallowing in the crap and and not realize you've lost your passion. So it's good to um, take a temperature of the people around you and really take your own temperature and look at what's happening. So I stepped away. It was hard. That was my baby. I had a lot of money into that thing. Life savings, life savings into that thing. And you know what? i probably never see it again, but that's okay. Cause I wasn't doing what I was passionate about anymore. And it was destroying who I was as a person. And it took my wife to tell me that that's, that's story number one. So don't be afraid to step away. Even if it was your baby story. Number two is, um, I spent 12 years off-road racing, uh, for Ford motor company and had a lot of success there. And I was very, very passionate about it. I never lost the passion for it. But it wasn't in the best interest of my family and what my values were. And my business coach at the time said, look, Jim, it's okay to step away. You can always do it again. If you really want to do it, it's okay to step away now and come back to it at a later date. Now, that's been about five years. And I'm thinking now, I probably won't ever go back. And I'm okay with that because I've found other passions course, if you follow me on Instagram, it's all it's family, God and family, right? Um, I, my soul is filled with this new passion and I don't miss the racing at all. So sometimes you'll find others. But what really got me to pull the trigger on that was understanding I could always do it again. So hopefully my two stories have given you encouragement. If you're not passionate about what you're doing anymore and you look around, you take that temperature of, of the business and you go, wow, I should probably step away know that you can do that and find happiness on the other side. I've had the best financial years I've ever had in my life post tequila company. I've had more excitement as a father and a follower of God post racing, you know, and things like that. So you know that you can do that. Okay. Rod shifting gears. If somebody realizes I've lost the passion in what I'm doing, what are a couple of ways that they might be able to regain that and then capture the momentum again to keep going in the business that you're they're in? Well, I think the, the first thing I already mentioned, and that's get back to your why, you know, and you mentioned taking your temperature. And so I'm going to make this recommendation. Take your temperature today. You know, let's just make it real simple on a scale, one to 10. Where's your passion for what you're doing today? And, and, do it for if you've got multiple endeavors, multiple businesses out there. What is do a passion rating today? Yeah. And then really do an honest assessment. What was your passion rating when you first started? And and then you've got a, a place to go say, where did this erosion happen? And maybe it hasn't eroded, but you want to kick it into a higher gear. So come up with a, a strategy, a battle plan to get back to what you lost. Or to make that exit strategy like like you mentioned, and know that it's going to be okay, no matter what you do, as long as you're following that passion. And that being said, don't make rash decisions. <laughs> and we talked about this. You know, this is where you you have to consult. You know, the good the good book says there's safety in a multitude of counselors. So don't make rash decisions, but make sound decisions based on what your original mission was, what your goals were, and what your future goals are going to be. And I'm with you, Jim. I, I've had an exciting life. And sometimes it's best to unbox the memories and relive the passion rather than try to regain that passion again. And it's like you said, it, it was easy to step away when you could tell yourself, I'm never going back. The other thing it's okay to say is, I know I'm never going to back, go back, and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. now, I, I could, you know, there were some great things. And this is the last thing I'm going to mention on that. There's this thing with, with drug addicts, and I'm assuming it's probably with any kind of addiction, where they call it chasing the high. You know, they, they had such a great experience once that they, they keep going back looking for that high again and again, and they can never quite capture that same experience again. So they keep doing it and keep doing it. Well, to, to overcome that addiction, you really just have to stop and say, no, I had that experience and I'm never going to have that particular experience again. So let's look for something else to put our passion into. And I think this is a great topic, Jim, because there are a lot of unhappy people out there. We've seen that. 
<laughs> that's that's why you're in in consulting and coaching. It it's okay if you're not happy where you're at, but do an honest assessment. What's it going to take to get it back? And maybe you're not supposed to get it back. Maybe you're supposed to move forward. And moving forward sometimes is just as hard, but it will come at less of a cost than staying where you are and being stuck in an unhappy zone or an unpassionate zone. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, the cost of, of being stuck or, or staying in your stuck, however you want to look at that, the cost could be astronomical. But I think oftentimes our ego and our pride gets in the way. And so we stay there thinking, oh, I'm just going to stick it out. I can't stop doing this. You know, everybody saw me. Hey, let me just give you that. You buy a business, right? You think you're passionate about it. Maybe you buy a franchise. You know, you feel like you want to run a, I don't know, Taco Bell or something, UPS store, you buy a franchise and you're in there and you're running it for, you know, three to six months and you realize this isn't anything like I thought. I'm absolutely miserable. My family hates it. They don't want to work in the store. You know, they don't want to make tacos, whatever that looks like for you. You're in it six months down the road. You realize it was nothing like you thought it was going to be. Now what? I'll tell you what. You make the decision to, to move on, to figure out how to unwind the deal, whether that's selling it at a loss breaking even, finding another partner, whatever that looks like. But if you drag it out, you're going to drag your name, your time, your energy, your family, your friends, your relationships through the mud because you've lost the passion and you realize, you know, this isn't what I want to do, but you stick it out because your pride and ego says, well, I spent a lot of money on this. Well, you're going to spend 10 times money if you're unhappy and you're not doing it the way that it should be done. So, Put your pride and your ego aside, evaluate, assess, make a decision, and then move forward on that decision. And of course, as Rod suggested, don't make a rash decision. Be smart about it, but but don't sit around because your pride and your ego are in the way. And, and that oftentimes will just crush not only your bank account, but your business. Absolutely. And it comes at a cost of, we've talked about it three times now, relationships. Yeah. You know, that's relationships are not disposable. <laughs> a business can be disposable. Your 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 product services are disposable, but relationships are never disposable. And lastly, I I would say is we we had a an episode within the last month, maybe, and it was cut the draggers. Yeah. You called it cut the draggers. Yeah. Well, sometimes the business is the drag. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes you have to cut the business. It's not the people in the business, it's it's the business itself. So um, be smart and be honest with yourself. I love this topic. I know I came up with it, but <laughs> it's a good topic, Jim. You did well. You did well. Time. Look, if you're listening to the show and you're going, man, I'm there. I need some help with this. Please join the Young Entrepreneur Syndicate. It's 99 bucks a month. You get four calls to ask all the questions you want to ask about your business, where you're at. You also have ask access to myself, Rod and our partner, Rachel, whether that's marketing or entrepreneurship or intrapreneurship. Okay. That's, that's 25 bucks a call that could change the trajectory of your business. And I don't care if you join for a month and you jump back out. If you want to, if you want me to come business consult with you, it's going to cost five figures. Okay. If you want to jump into this group, it's going to cost you $99. I mean, seriously, jump in. We'd love to have you. We will work through these problems with you and many, many more uh, Rod specializes in the soft skills in business, and those skills are the ones that will ident identify your passion for the business or help build that passion or reinforce what you're passionate about. So jump in. We'd love to have you. Rod, I can't wait till next week. I'm going to get an even better topic for us to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> How are we going to do that, Jim? I look forward to it. I look forward to this every week, though, and I hope all of our listeners do as well. Yeah, so, me too. Pass well, it on. Share it. Yep. Share the show. Thank you.